Hey everybody, this is Triple C, CC Clevenger from Boynton Beach, Florida, and you're watching Local Band Smokeout. Don't go anywhere. We are joined by the one and only, Rosa! Yeah, hell yeah! Gentlemen, thank you for joining. I appreciate you. Thank you guys thank you, for man. being here. Oh, it's, 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 I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I feel like I keep talking about you guys because I think you've got an ultra hit on your hands. But before we even get there, do me a favor, kindly introduce yourself. Cheers on the beers, they'll all do the same. Uh, let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything and everything. All right, uh, I'm Cam, Gavin, and we are Rosalind. Um, I am out of Iowa, I'm out of Illinois. And so we just kind of merged the two together, you know what I mean, a little Midwest country, rock country. Uh, and we're currently in Nashville right now. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go down here and just kind of try to meet as many people as we can, and Hang you out, know, have a good time while we're here. You know, yeah, just make this. You know, try to do our thing with this journey. I mean, a lot of people saying what you're saying. You know, with the whole, uh, you know, I think we got something good here. You know, so it's like, if you're gonna make it happen, make it happen here. So, so you guys, here, you guys are time. just you decided to just meet up in Nashville and just and just meet and mingle. No, so we meet, yeah, oh yeah, like me and our, our my wife and uh, and his ladies down here with us were, uh, my birthday was yesterday, as you know, BG. Happy birthday. Uh, that's right. Um, yeah, so we came down, we planned this out for like a month or so, yeah. and we thought it'd be, you know, this is the only way to do it. You know, you got to come down here, we got to meet, you know, co-writers, uh, you know, producers, anybody, you know, and then on top of that, just have a good time, you know, just have a good time and experience Nashville, so. We know a few people down here that were... Yeah, messaging and that are going to show us of the the ropes of the town and everything. Sure. So. How did uh, I know you guys were in like previous projects and and specifically non-country projects? How can you? I and I know a little bit of the backstory, but I don't think everybody watching knows. Can you can you talk about how you guys met, decided to to form Rosalind, and just kind of step away from from the heavier scene and do a different sound? I moved completely away from my last project which was eugene levy um i've loved country i've loved hard rock for a long time pop punk is fun i've always loved it it's a deep nice you know place in my heart uh, but i just as i get older man this is you know it just keeps feeding at me i you know losing sleep about it it's like man i just got to try it you know i if i don't try it i'm gonna you know i'm gonna regret something so um while I was in Levy, he's still in Monroe. Yep. We're both on this Battle of the Bands uh, in the Quad Cities where we're from in Iowa. Yeah. Um, so him and he and his band travel over, and this is for a, a, a spot to open the grandstand in our local uh, or our regional fairgrounds. And they bring in a rock band, a couple different uh, country art, uh, country artists, and all that. And there's fifteen to twenty-five thousand people in the crowd, so it's just a big opportunity for wow. whoever got to win. And we were battling. I mean, we, he was one. Of, we were one of two of the. Uh, I don't know what was it, seven, well, six there's, fans. There started out to be about sixty or so that entered. Yeah, and you voted. Yeah, and they voted. Yeah, and and we aren't from that area. We we drove from two hours away. Exactly. We, we made the top like so eight. How, how did how did they vote? Did, like, did you play like a one song off or? So you did a whole set. Once you got voted in to make the final eight, so yeah. it was all social media. The fans came in, they voted you, the top eight made it to the actual battle where you would, you perform, you just, you go out and you do a set. And so that's what we did. We were kind of local, you know, we're kind of closer to that area. So uh, we were lucky enough to win, Eugene Levy won. We opened up for Brantley Gilbert, uh, which is crazy. Uh, Kid Rock told, said that, he, you know, he wouldn't do any openers. So that was originally going to be who he was going to open for. And he said no openers. And so Brantley was like, yeah, well, you know, we don't care. Opener. And uh, while I'm watching his band at the battle, I'm like, dude, this guy can sing, he can play, he's got the look, you know what I mean? And we started drinking Handsome. even before, right? We were doing beers and we were having shots yeah. and we were just, you know, doing the band thing. You know how it goes, BG, when you're, just, you're around the boys and you're just having a good time, you're meeting, you're mingling, we're connecting. Got his number and I was like, dude, I've been writing some country stuff, dude. What do you think about these? And when he when he heard it, 
This is a good I time think. I think to explain my back. It is quick. right. right. Yeah, so, he said. Um, he said. Let me hop in and take over. <laughs> uh, I, I actually before I was in the hard rock band Monroe, which I'm I'm still a part of. We're we're still actively doing things. Um, but I started out doing country music, and uh, it eventually led into where Monroe started being. It was kind of partially country because at the time that's all we knew how to do at first and then it turned into hard rock and and um we started working with these uh producers from some real big bands and we ended up in the battle of bands and then I, that's where i met him and when he came up to me afterwards and he was just like hey i got this country thing going it was kind of like fate you know it was kind of like a little bit something in the back of my mind was like actually I have a lot of original country songs that I've been sitting on for four or five years. And um, it just, it's, it was fate that that happened to connect that way. And, crazy. and I was like, I've always said I would hate for my original country music to just die one day. Because, you know, like Monroe's got EPs out and stuff like that. And all my country songs, they've just been put on the back burner for so long. So when he said this, I'm like, this is the shot to not let these songs die. Wow. That is a really, really cool backstory. Did you guys place in the battle? Either one of your bands? Uh, they only introduced or they only said who won and all the other seven, they didn't they didn't say like order or nothing. Yeah, I got you. I mean but we, we we made the top I, right. whatever it was, the top eight, but I bet they were top I for sure they were top three. I was they were either two or three. They were either two or three. Uh, and the 42s were either two or three as well. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, Levy won that. I went up and, or, you know, I got to open up in front of 15, 20,000 people. That was a sweet experience. And it was Brantley Gilbert. And I was like, dude, I love Brantley. I've, you know, I've been following country. I've loved country. Yeah. And uh, his manager hit me up. Oh, two days after that show, dude. Brantley was stage right side of me. Uh, watching levy set watching our set dude and he was vibing it and all that and i'm a stage right i was stage right at the time and uh i get an email on my personal email um from aaron kaiser which is his manager saying hey uh brantley's looking for a new guitar player his uh his longtime guitarist is retiring after this year send me a send me a few covers of you playing brantley stuff and i was like holy crap dude what is going on is this my chance to like do the country thing am i going to do it on this level and uh we were late to the punch this dude has announced his retirement i mean months ago so but it was cool to at least be humbled like that and say hey you know brantley or somebody saw the opportunity or saw the you know yeah, potential once i heard that i was like dude and i didn't get the job obviously and i was like dude i'm going i'm going all in and then i hit up i literally hit you up no weeks after and i was like it's time i sent over think that i needed you without vocals think that i needed you which is what you love so much bg and thank you for it's, that it's a smash hit dude people, unreal, people right? just so need to hear it if it gets on the radio you guys are just gonna <laughs> skyrocket straight to the moon I, I had those lyrics. Dude, he written. called me on the fucking phone, man, while I was on uh, while I was in my garage. I sent him over the raw demo of the instrumentals. I've and never heard it before. Never heard it in Ever. his life. He calls me on the phone. He goes, "Dude, you're not gonna believe this, but I've had this song written for five, five years, years, and yeah. he sang it to me on the phone." BG, I'm not lying to you. The same chills that anybody else would get, but it was, dude, it was crazy. What the crawlies and everything? I said, dude, we have to do this. Yeah, it and fit. Then, it literally couldn't have fallen. It was unreal. And he's never heard it in his life. And no, no. He clue. sent it to me, and and I just started humming some old lyrics of mine, and I was like, it was like that song was written for those words. It's, it's so unreal. good. It's so perfect. Who who did you guys go to for production to actually like? complete the whole song cam you did it all yourself in my basement bro yeah what do you what do you use as your daw and, and any, any vsts we, reaper. we need to know about so i'm a reaper guy um i use reaper not the free version i did buy it i'm not you know i i, I wanted the full expand you know i wanted the full thing because i do like to produce uh vsts on that song is all stl tones howard benson in particular producer pack uh, and, uh, the banjo is also, um, MIDI. That is not a real banjo player. Um, that is ample, ample, ample sound or ample plugins, uh, banjo. It's like 150 bucks or hundred bucks plug in fire. It's great. 
And then the drums. The drums are MIDI. And that is uh, Stephen Slate. I love how you just know all the stuff on top of your head. You can tell you use Reaper often because you can just <laughs> like, you can just rattle it. Like if we can nerd talk VSTs and plugins and stuff, you you you're on it often. I love it. Love and and then is that the same as far as MIDI goes for the track that we got an exclusive of yesterday? That's coming out in everything October. Was done. Yep, everything was done. The steel player. That's a real steel player we hired out to have done. Yep. Yeah, dude, you guys are you guys are on point, man. For real. Uh, and we'll all we've been it. saying is if we get into a spot, if we can just get into the right producer like a Joey Moy mm -hmm. or a good or a nice, you know, a nice uh, co-write, like a good co-write room, dude, I think it'd be over. I literally that, That's think why you're in Nashville. That's why we're yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's super, it's awesome when like, for instance, the hard rock band that I'm in, we spent 15 grand on our producing. My producer's in my band. Right here, you know. So like, and it's not bad, dude. It's yeah, good it's quality. Great. It bro. sounds like, like radio-worthy music, in my opinion. Yeah. And I, I listen. This is what I do. I'm telling you guys, you've got to hit on your hands. We've got to figure out how to get on the radio. We've got. And you're to. doing everything you can, BG. Dude, uh, I can't tell you, man, how how much I appreciate. You. He's been with us since since Levy, bro. I followed him since I was in Levy, and he's been jamming our stuff. And I've just gotten to know him a little bit. You know what I mean? Just by. Yeah. Virtual, obviously, but this uh, track coming out here soon. They just it, heard it. They oh, just heard you? it last night okay. exclusively. Fifteen people got to hear it. I don't know if they Lonely Barstool. Yeah, coming out October thirteenth. They're all they're That's... all bangers, and I'm someone that I'm a metalhead. I don't really listen to country music, but I when I heard "Think That I Needed You," I said, I think this needs to be on the radio and other people need to hear this. And and I've got some friends in, in Southern Florida that are in the boonies areas and stuff like that, that that do the bonfires and all that stuff. And I'm telling you, mud and this is right up their alley. And I'm just, That's I'm gonna do everything I can to, to help you guys any way possible, for real. I believe in you. Dude, I really appreciate yeah, that. Absolutely. That's crazy. Yeah, that's I, crazy. What I and what I've heard on your reviews and stuff, how all these different similarities of like the emo and all this other stuff. That that's what I really love about this project. Is exactly. There's not. I can't compare us to a country singer. I I'll can't be. either, dude. We, we we fall in the genre, but we're For different sure. enough to where it's like I haven't heard I haven't heard something like this before. Right. So, whether it be his vocal, like the way he sings or the way we harmonize or the way the song's written, you know what I mean? It's still very much so pop oriented chord progressions or standard rock four chord progression. You know what I mean? It's not complicated. I mean, it's, it's the, everything's been done in music and you know this. You listen to every metal song, you listen to every, everything's been done, bro. Everything's been done. You just put in a different twist on it for mm -hmm. the for the day that you're in there inspired in the studio and you're just... I think this sounds cool here sort of thing, right? So I think his voice is unique. I think I think the way he sings, the what what he sings about is unique and it's got a lot of emo, a lot of emotion, a lot of totally. you know, heartbreak. It's, There's a lot yeah. of all that there, man. Well, huge it's, like I'm a huge hard rock fan, you know. I'm huge. a huge country fan too. Um, which is weird, you know, and when in that hard rock band world, when I flip that switch, everyone that I talk to is like country music. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Weird. I'm like, what's your problem? Right. I'm like, yeah, country's great. I, I love being out on a boat and listening to uh, Luke Combs or something. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I'm having the time of my life drinking beer and stuff. Right. Like, but I also, you know, I think it's the hard rock uh, influences and stuff that For bring sure. bring out what's cool about Rose. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Uh, were you guys uh, prepped on the trivia portion of the show? Uh, I know about this and I didn't tell him. Damn, dude, I forgot. I no so they always do a trivia, dude, and I forgot about this. Are you in a location that nearby has any form of hot sauce? If not, we can just go yes. beer beer chugging. Go ahead, go get it. Oh god, you uh, have I hot sauce. Hot sauce at Walmart. Yeah, we just bring, the stuff, bring the good stuff. Bring the good. The top. Oh. Grab up the top shelf. The top shelf stuff. Hell he's yeah. Got the, uh, oh, this is as top shelf as she gets. All right. Yeah, he's Straight. got the Cholula. <laughs> hell yeah all right Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> let's go how do we have beer that's what we're doing so, with to, here. to do the trivia i need to know if you guys could agree on a movie or tv show where if i ask you trivia on this movie or tv show there's no way to stump you you've seen this movie i in my opinion it's easier to pick a movie than a tv show because tv shows has seven seasons 30 episodes a season a movie's easier but it's your call like what what, what show have you seen the most 
God. Um, if you if you watch a lot of something, dude, then I need your help. So you're good. I mean, you've seen this movie 20 times. You're on your fifth run through of The Office if you pick that or, or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. I mean, you go into a lot of the fucking like uh, Tommy Boys or the old, you know what I mean? Like the old comedy ones. I'm good. Or Star Wars, I'll kill. Oh, I was going to say, I could do a mad Star Wars. Let's do it. Star movie. Wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a particular oh, Star yeah. Wars movie? Like episode what? Prequels I or original? Let's keep to prequels. Prequels? I've seen those more than the old ones. So one I've through seen three. A million times, yeah. but one through three. Episode one through three. Because one, two. The, you mean, the you mean four, five, six? Oh, uh, prequels? Yes. Prequel? You mean four, five, six? Like the seventies originals? No. no, prequels. One, two, three. Yeah, like, that was oh, okay. So like clones three. or Clone something. Wars? Yeah, Clone Revenge Wars. of the Sith. Yeah. I got you. Okay, give me just a second on that. Uh, have you guys ever considered having like a big name? I know it's expensive, man. It sucks because it's expensive, but just a big name attached to like a future single that could be the. And who, who have you considered, or or you think would be a good fit? I mean, I know three dudes that would, um, because again, the whole hard rock experience that we but let's country stuff's brand new to right. us. That's Every, true. Everything we relate to is goes back to our hard rock stuff or that's true. You know, Eugene Levy Monroe. Um I mean it would be really strange, but I could I could probably um get so in Monroe we work with three people. We work with the drummer of Seven Dust is our vice president of the record label that my rock band belongs to. And the drummer for Breaking Benjamin a good friend of mine and the guitar player for three days grace yep. also helped produce our um Your EP? our ep and i could message any of them they'll answer me immediately and it would be different getting a guy from the rock world know, to yeah. come and feature on a country song right if it was me like somebody that would actually elevate us to in country like on country radio it would definitely be for me, it would be Brantley. I think Brantley would fit us really well, obviously. Um, Hardy would fit us really well. Hardy, bro. I mean, Hardy would be great. I wouldn't mind Ernest. Uh, and you're talking like, I mean, they're not on the lower scale, but they're, you know what I mean? Like, not, it, 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 they're it, it, like Morgan Wallen's no way. I mean, yeah. it's not going to happen. Luke Combs, not going to happen. Uh, Al Dean, I mean, you know, something like that. That would be fire you know, give them a verse or help, you know, give them a chorus or, you know what I mean? Something like that to where I'll give them the whole damn song. I, I, I just want the whole line. Thing. Bro, I'll it. write all the just, instrumentals yeah. and send it off to him. That's what I was thinking about doing before BG. I was like, dude, if I can't find a singer, I'm just gonna write country songs as instrumentals and s submit them, submit them out or sell them out to whatever. That's like, smart. That's publishing. smart. Somebody will buy them, and that's royalties. Shop them out. Yeah, right, that's royalties. Exactly. That's royalties. Uh, yeah, I found Gavin. It's unbelievable. Should we? We're do just getting started. Should we? Uh, should we try the Star Wars trivia? I'm ready. Yeah. All right, here we go. You got to pick it. Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith. Oh. In Revenge of the Sith, two people in the entire movie are set on fire. They are on fire for some reason. Can you name the two people that are on One fire? One's definitely Anakin. Definitely Anakin. Um, fire? That's what it says. Uh, uh, when, when, when Padme died. No. They didn't do that. Someone got set on fire when they died. That is correct. So, quite on. No, that, no that, that's the that, first one. Yeah, he did on. though. I think he did he get set on fire. Did, of course, that's the that's the Jedi thing. To yeah, do. he did get set on fire. I'll give you a hint. Obi Wan shoots this person. Oh, General Grievous, bro! General Grievous and Anakin Skywalker. It's technically Vader. I'll give it to you. Give me a hell and it General is Grievous. <laughs> so I gotta do the hot sauce. I thought he got shot. He, he did, and then it up, shot him, and then he like he oh, shoots him in the no, heart, and then he bursts no, into a flame, and then yeah. dies. Yeah. He is right, 100. Yeah. percent Only because he won, he has to oh. do it. If you win, you gotta drink. What is that? If you lose it, so. this is a uh, this is mule sauce. Mule sauce. Mule sauce. It's a uh, 
I don't know. Oh, it's like, it's like a it's like So a we four, are like a couple four times. out of ten. You guys don't have to do it because I didn't stump you. Well, at least drink to you, bro. God, I can't believe I'm on. I can't believe I'm on local man smoke out, dude. That's kind of crazy. Uh, is is Levy still active? Yes. You're you're still in Levy, or does this has become like the full no, time? No, I I left. I left. I didn't want to hold those guys back, and I wish them the best of luck. Um, they're they're working on kind of. Uh, regaining what they lost when I left. And obviously I produced a lot of levy, you know what I mean? So it, I put them in a really tough spot and it was, and it sucks and I hated it. It was a super hard decision. I had such a good time. Those guys were brothers to me. And, uh, you know, I mean, one of the guitar players is my son's godfather, bro. So it's like, you know, I could kind of put things into perspective as to how I felt about leaving. But brother, when you just have that thing that's itching at you and just, telling you that i mean it's time to go it's just time to go and let bygones be bygones there's no bad blood man we talk to this day and it's great everything's all good i, I, I do want to ask you about the brantley show so so levy's like as pop punk as it gets but then this Bro, is a country so, headlining dude. thing how was oh, the crowd reception better than you'd think man so some people were like wrong you know some people were like yelling up wrong crowd and uh i actually thought the same thing when, when they won, I was like, I wonder how that's going to go over. I but, was like, I wonder. Yeah, how's it going to go over, right? And here was my thing. And then so, here's the thing. We heard those people doing that. I didn't really hear them. We had our in-ears in, so it's tough. But we got to hear it from the other people that were like, hey, man, in the crowd, people were like, you know, hey, wrong crowd. You're going to get those drunk those drunk people who are going to do that. And those, I mean, I get that, and I'm good with it. Yeah. Cool thing is, you're here, and you have to listen to me for 30 minutes. So uh, the cool thing was we blew the roof off the place. It was great. It was a lot of good, you know, a lot of good perception. And we sold out of everything in our merch uh, at the front, at the front deal. So, you know what I mean? Everything. Hey, something said something. So, I mean. That's awesome. Everything. Everything. I mean, everything was gone. See you, bye. And then, uh, and then two days later, I get a freaking email from Aaron Kaiser, which is uh, Brantley's manager, asking to do some guitar. Dude, it was the, it was it was like a godsend. It was crazy because if not that not have happened, I wouldn't. I don't think I would have been doing. I don't know, but I can't say for sure that I'd be. We'd be right here right now. Well, you wanted to be the guitar player from Monroe. <laughs> I did. I was like, dude, if, if I'm gonna do, nothing, I at least want to do hard rock. And I was like, uh, he plays guitar and sings in Monroe. And I was like, put the put the guitar down, dude. Put it down. Just be a front man. Let me get, let me play guitar. All I want to do is play hard rock. Right, chugging, you know what I mean? Like, just hard rock guitar just does something to me, man. But, yeah. Uh, and I, the offer's still on the table, apparently. But uh, it may not be. I don't know. But Rosalind's doing well, and I love it. And I love where I'm at right now. So, for now, I'm here. This is, this is some fun random ones, just so we can learn Let's a little go. more about you guys. Do you have any phobias or anything that scares you? I don't like a lot of holes. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I've heard that term before. Where like you it, like like let's say it like I zooms in on someone's video. skin and it shows like pores and stuff like what? Yeah, I don't like I don't know what about it I didn't even know it was a thing what I just one day I saw something with like a bunch of holes and I was just just something about it just like irked me the wrong way is that right? and then like three years later I oh. see this thing on like the internet or something that was like tribal something phobia is a thing and I was like holes. oh my gosh I have that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. What about you, uh, Snakes, bro. Yeah, the like animal, snakes. the animal of Satan himself, dude. Unbelievable. Something about him. No legs. They just don't want. Yeah. See, you got a snake <laughs> on you, dude. No. <laughs> way. Yeah, I'm good. So funny story about snakes, bro. Check this out. I used to. I was renting a house in Iowa. Garter snake, the nicest snake. Apparently, if it's a, if there's a snake that can be the nicest, that's yeah. the one. Garter, garter snake. In my living room, dude. I saw it when I walked in, walked home, and I got home. I called the bank immediately after, applied for a mortgage, got a mortgage, moved out a week later, bro. Snakes will make me move out of a You curtain. left because of one snake? One snake, gone, see ya. Wow. <laughs> Unreal, bro. It was unbelievable. It wasn't, wasn't a house for you, I guess. Then. Dude, I don't know, man. I just can't do a snake, man. Let's say, let's say the beers are hitting tonight. Rosalind just played... Great show, a lot of merch sales. The beers are hitting. We can only go one Ooh. place for the after party for some munchies. Where are we going to eat? Oh, that's right. 
I love. I went to Waffle House. Waffle today. House, bro. Hell yeah! It was. <laughs> Hell yeah, it right. was there's no Waffle Houses on the West Coast, only on the East Coast. But I'm from Florida, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Thank God I was hoping so. I even made a Facebook status earlier that said, just had the worst service I've ever had in my life from Waffle House, and I loved every second of it. Because <laughs> you expect it, dude, right? right. <laughs> the food is so good, but there's one woman serving 17 tables at 2 in the morning. If I get there and that cook's not – Got the door half open, smoking a cigarette. Right. <laughs> You're not going to that waffle. <laughs> I don't want it. No doubt, right? That I'll is get, hilarious. I'll be with you in a second. You know what I mean? <laughs> that well, is funny. Well, actually, uh, she messed up our hash browns, and my uh, girlfriend was like, oh, hey, uh, you you did, you messed up my hash browns. And she looks at us and goes, oh, shit, and just turns around and walks out. I love like, that, dude. Like, All right, you just want a nice down-to-earth right. waitress, man, you know? For sure. Uh, do you guys collect anything? Do you have any, like, odd hobbies, collectibles that you do that, uh, I don't know, Funkos, baseball cards, anything like that? Yeah, so I, I think I still have my Pokemon cards from 2000 and whatever it would have been, dude. In good Maybe condition? Phenomenal condition. Phenomenal, like Charizards, like from 2000, 1999, 2000, whatever Charizards it was. Money. I know, just a ton of them. I just have all these Pokemon cards that have been in, away for a long time. I also collect, I don't know, I collect, I'm starting a collection of Star Wars lightsabers, like the Force Effects lightsabers. And, you know, so, yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm 34 years old as of yesterday and still a nerd, man. I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm still that dude from, you know, 2000, whatever. So, I debated on asking you a lightsaber co uh, color question, but I figured if you pick Star Wars, you, you probably know that one. So yeah, we're, we're not going to go with that one. Right, uh, no, for sure. If, if well, all that was a good one. The general Grievous saying, I didn't even think about it, dude. That was a really well, yeah, good one that he, like, so many people. He, he burned differently than the or traditional Agreed. Exactly. burning person right. that you think of. Right, yeah. If, if all of a sudden uh, just a mass amount of finances fall in your guys' lap, is there is there a toy or item you've always wanted your whole life, whether it be a car or or something expensive, but now you can afford it? It's, it doesn't even crack the fracture of the bank because of this because this advance or this label signing or whatever the case may be. Like, what is something you've always wanted and now you can buy it? A jet ski. Really? So much fun. No, I, I, I can honestly probably buy that right now. But I know that's what I'm, I'm like, saying. If You're I'm thinking like, of something unattainable. I, I don't – I'm not a big fancy car guy. I don't want either. a fancy car. Um, I I would probably buy a – I have a nice truck, but I'd probably buy a nicer truck. You know, I'd, probably, I, yeah, I'd just sure. buy something realistic. I wouldn't go nothing crazy, you know, but I don't know. I feel like if I had a bunch of money, I wouldn't be going off balling, you know. I, That's exactly what I'd do. I'd probably buy a house. You know, nothing crazy either. I'm not wasting, blowing all my money. Right. I'd go straight to Paul Reed Smith, and I'd have an absolute, uh, absolute perfect, the perfect private stock Paul Reed Smith made just for me. Uh, I've always wanted, I've always wanted to have a guitar special ordered for me, and I think that's, and I'm a Paul Reed Smith. I'm a PRS artist, so. If you go on their website, I'm a part of their 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 artist, uh, whatever. So I use, yeah, I, I, I use PRS <laughs> exclu exclusively, bit, have been for years. And dude, I would love a private stock. And it's uh, yeah, it's it's private to you, right? So the back of the headstock it says you know built for Cameron Smith. It, yeah, I mean I would that just go cool. all out. But you're talking 15 G's, man. Something like you know what I mean? Unbelievable money. Yeah, that would be that would be what I'd buy for sure. We're almost out of time. I want to end on on two fun questions. Uh, do you guys have any band advice that you could give to, to being that you've been in and out of projects over the years? There was a mistake you made early on in your career that you just don't want a band that's just starting out to make. And second, please tell us anything you're allowed to tell us about beyond 2023 plans for Rosalind. I'll start out with the first question. Right. You sit and think. Yeah, you I've had the, a lot of experience with the band out, thing, dude. Um, to bands out there that have multiple, multiple members, and they all have a contributing, you know, equal contributing factors, right? Whether it be a 25 
percent, whatever it is, split up. Is, is 20, never mind. Like 25, 25, 25, 25. Like if it's a four piece band, you know what I mean? So like Levy had that. And so um, I would say. I think, I I say, think before you even go on, you've already given advice that no one talks about. So you guys, so that, you guys had decided a mutual equal split for band members when the money does come in, which is right. something that and I don't think any other band does. They don't, they so don't even talk about that. LLC. Right. So we created an LLC, Eugene Levy band LLC, and we all split 25% each. Um, so the pay, you know, the payment we, we agreed, we put it right back into the band as an investment and that sort of thing, which is fine. But in regards to the creative aspect, which is why a lot of bands break up, too many cooks in the kitchen is never a good thing. I agree. It's okay. It's okay to just be, to just know your role. Whatever you bring something to the table as a musician in the band that you're in, just be that guy. Not everybody's bass line, not everybody's guitar part, not everybody's vocal line has to make every single song. Better is always better. And it's okay. But you got to, I think egos kill so many bands, man. I really do. And if you just put in your head, better is always better, everybody, right? Rising tide lifts all boats. You're already a part of it. Better is always better. I Take the it. egos out of it. And that way, you know, that way nobody clashes heads and, you know, then there's no turmoil and all that. But that would be my thing, man. That's my band advice because I've seen it and I've dealt with it and, I think we do a really good job of, you know, understanding that. So that's my band advice. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with him fully. You know, I mean, I've been writing all the songs for uh, Monroe and working on the lyrics for this and stuff. We work very well together. Um, he comes to me with all the music, and I throw words on it, and he never really disagrees. Um, but I it's mean, just great. Yeah, that but that's happens. But just could be too good to be true for some people. Could be, you know, yeah. and. Um, yeah, don't have too many uh, cooks in the kitchen, for sure, because then it's just you're about to lead to fighting. And the other thing I would say is don't worry about money at all. I have never taken a dollar from any band I've ever been in. I throw every yeah. single thing back into it. Exactly. And Reinvest in yourself. The money comes later. And like I really give a shit about 50 to 100 bucks a night when exactly. it's split between everybody. Exactly. Like, what – I, I, I work a full time job. He does. Um, yeah. I don't need that hundred bucks, you know. But you, the band could use it. The you band can, could you, absolutely. You put right. that whole thing towards merch or something that will re, that will pay off, right? Always put it back into merch or whatever to get to the you know whatever the next show whatever it is. But good finances, good finances, and not too many cooks in the kitchen. That's it. Yeah, I mean, and if you're brand new at playing music and you're just getting into the band world and stuff. I would just say play live everywhere you can. No Doesn't doubt. matter if it's a pizza place. Right. Just do it. Get Suck. experience. Suck for like three years. It's okay. Yeah. Get experience. Because that's because <laughs> you have to suck right. in order to know what not for what sure. it's like, you know? Yeah. I have I have played to one person. I have played to ten thousand. Exactly. You know, and um you gotta know what that's like. You know, and I can understand when you get to a little bit of a point in your music career, such as me and Cam, where we can be a little more picky and choosy on things that we take or want to do. But to guys just starting out and stuff, take anything you can get. Absolutely. Always. Experience is. That's how you get your name out there. Even if it's a bad name, it's a sure. name. That's right. You know, they'll watch you get good. Right. Final thought. What can you guys tell us about anything that you have in the future? I know the single's coming out next month, but beyond sure. that, um, can we talk about shows down yeah. the road? Can we talk about uh, uh, plans of EP album? Anything you're allowed to tell me? Sure. Yeah, no, we're allowed to tell you everything because we own everything about Rosalind. We're not on any sort of label of any sort of kind, nothing. I'll tell you everything you want to know. If uh, a label came calling, are you, are you at least reading the contract? We don't get pushed around. We don't, yeah, yeah, of course we read it. Of course, I go, you know, I meet with them. I call, yeah, absolutely. We'll hear anybody. Cool. Um, so, there's another single after Lonely Barstool that will be released before the end of the year. So, we will end the year on four singles. Um, we write constantly. There's plenty more, there's plenty more to come. 
uh, we are releasing every six weeks. That's our that's our strategy. We're releasing every six weeks. We're building this discography. Um, next year is showtime. Uh, we will be doing we will be hitting live live shows and that sort of thing uh, locally, um, especially when some of these national acts come and come to town. Um, we have one booked in August of next year uh, that's kind of local to us and it's a nice little festival thing. Um, but yeah, right now we're just trying to get our, you know, just trying to get used to each other on stage and kind of doing that whole thing. We have a backing band, obviously, but, uh, yeah, this is a hundred percent what Rosalind is. We are a 50, yeah. 50, uh, the backing band is just a live band and this is exactly how we intend to use it and, and, and do it just like this, man. So every six weeks, look for a Rosalind single and, uh, videos, content, TikToks, etc. cetera. We're going to use all outlets to try to blow up, man. Our ammo and our arsenal is full for sure. So Dude, we got, we got, yeah. we got some stuff. I love. I can't wait, man. the The single we heard yesterday was fantastic, boys. I hope you have a great night and you just bump into some Grammy award winning producer tonight and and changes Imagine. your lives. I believe it's very possible. I believe in you guys, and I don't tell every guest that we have on the show that. Uh, that's just how much I think think that I needed you is is a hit smash. It just we just got to get it on the radio. I'm gonna try and do my best to help, man. But thank you guys so much for doing this for real, bro. Thank, thank you, you for having us, man. I'm a diehard supporter of local band Smokeout. I always will. BG, thank you for what you do for guys like us, bands like us. Uh, yeah, your platform is 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 undeniable, man. So uh, and, and to, you're the first one too. So you are the first one. This yeah. is the first Rosalind interview, bro. So. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Rosalind interview. Cheers, but boys. Yeah. Let's go out on a, on a on a beer chug. And uh, I wish you nothing but success, for real. Let's go. Roseland! Give me a hell yeah! We out. Thank you, fellas. We'll be talking soon. Peace. Thanks, bro. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.